Hello guys and girls. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look at how to create a React Native to-do application as you can see on the right side on the screen. So it's a to-do application where you can uh, add new notes, you can delete notes and the notes are automatically saved in uh, async storage so you can actually restart the application uh, and the notes will still be there all right. Now I have already written the code for this, uh, so you can go ahead and uh, open up the GitHub link in the repo. Uh, I'm gonna leave it in the de description of the video. And you can do a git clone of the repo, npm install, npm start, and you should be go good to go. You also need node of course, uh, and you also need the expo CLI. Uh, you can install the expo CLI by typing npm install. Uh, expo CLI and then the G uh, flag for global. All right. You should probably use a node version bigger than or equal to 12. And also, if you're having problem problems, just follow these instructions right here because uh, they're currently a bug in a node module. All right. So don't forget also to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this so to start off we're gonna go through the actual layout of the application uh, and then we're gonna go through the code here and see what everything does the logic and stuff so I've prepared this image we're gonna take a look at now this is how the actual application looks uh, we got the header here oh, first off we got the actual app so the app is this white line so the entire app the app handles all logic for adding notes, deleting notes, loading existing notes, and so on. Then we got the header. The header doesn't do anything. It just sits there and looks pretty, but it's its own component, all right? Then we got this scroll view here, which is responsible, responsible for displaying the notes and also scrolling through the notes. Then we got the footer down here. Uh, this button here is actually a part of the footer. This is a keyboard avoiding view. So when you press here, new note, the keyboard comes up on your phone. This uh, view, the footer is going to move up uh, and change position depending on where the keyboard is on your phone. All right. So the note, uh, the footer is also responsible for uh, adding notes so when you add a note it's actually then dispatched to the app which handles uh, the actual logic of hand, uh, adding the note all right but we're gonna go through that in the code so let's open up app.js which you can find in the root folder here of the project so we start off by just doing a couple of normal imports. We're using style sheet, text, view, scroll view, touchable opacity for buttons and async storage for saving uh, notes. We're also importing this config file. Uh, it doesn't do anything except setting the title of the app. So you can change it here if you want to. We're also importing the header, which is the pretty part. Doesn't do anything at all. And we're also importing the footer, which is responsible for handling the position and adding new notes. All right, by position, I mean the position of the actual footer part, so the button and the text input here. All right, so we're gonna start off by going uh, through the app component, so the root component here, uh, and then take a look at the header and the footer. Uh, I've also written comments so you can uh, see what each method here does. So the app is just a simple class-based component. We got the constructor here where we keep in the state. We got our notes array, which uh, keeps all the notes we have added or the user have added. We also get this note here, which is a data type string. It uh, simply holds the current value of the note. So the input field here, what is currently written. It also resets this value when a new note is added. So the user can add a new note, right? 
Then we got the life cycle method here, uh, React Native uh, Componented Mount, uh, which simply loads nodes from a sync storage if nodes exist. If there are no nodes, it doesn't do anything. Then we got the up update a sync storage here. So the way it works is first off, we're keeping the state of the application. So nodes are added to the state. And the sync storage basically reflects the state. Now there are other ways you can do this. In this example, we're just removing all nodes and then resetting the nodes depending on what action the user has taken, right? Now you could, go, of course, go in and parse this each node a node in the sync storage for itself and uh, uh, parse and remove from the sync storage itself. And do stuff like that but for this example we're keeping it simple so we're just removing all nodes and resetting all nodes depending on what the user have done all right so this is a simple promise based method which returns a promise so it resolves true if everything is all right otherwise it rejects with an error message <coughs> then we got this clone nodes method what it does is it creates a shallow copy of the state's node array. The reason for this is when we add a new node, so we're pushing a new node to the nodes array, right? We don't want to push it directly, so we're editing the nodes array directly. Instead, we're making a shallow copy of the nodes array. Then we're perform performing our actions on the node array we have made a copy of, and then resetting the nodes, right? We do this because that's the way you should work with React Native in a mutable manner. So after the clone nodes method, we get this add note. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It's responsible for adding a new node. So if this.state.node.length is smaller than or equal to zero, that means that this part here, the user hasn't added any text here, right? So if the user hasn't added any text and tries to add a new node, of course, we don't want to do anything. So we just leave that blank. So we're, we're returning false here or undefined. Then we got this try catch statement. When we're cloning the actual nodes from the current state, we're then pushing the new node to the cloned array, right? Then we update the sync storage with the new nodes and we're setting the states with the new nodes and we're setting the current state of the node string. We're also catching an error here if something didn't go all right. Then we got the remo uh, remove node, which uh, removes uh, a node based, or a node is a to do item, but it removes a node based on uh, array index. So we're cloning the nodes. First, a shallow copy, then we do a splice, so we're removing one item from the clone nodes at this index. The index is passed from a map function, which we're going to go through later. After that, we're updating the async storage with the new nodes, and we're also setting the state to the new nodes, right? We're also doing a try catch here, so we're catching if there are any errors. Then we got this method, render notes. It renders all the notes in a note array in a map. So a map is just a JavaScript function that returns a function for each element in an array. It, it also returns a new array. In this case, the function we're returning for each element, which is each note, as you can see, we're mapping the notes from the state, is returning a touchable opacity, so a button, and a text with the actual text from the node. So this is the text, right? We're also calling this method here, remove node. And we, we're appending this to each node that is added by the user. And this is the index of the node, which lets us use this method, remove node, based on the array index, right? So as I said, we're splicing uh, based on the index of the actual node, right? We're also using the key uh, property here, which is used by React Native to keep track of uh, elements that have been updated, removed, uh, or changed. Uh, you can't delete this because React Native will give you a warning. This is used 
by the DOM, right? Then we got the render method. And here we are just rendering a simple view, which wraps our header, which is then this part, scroll view and footer, right? So we get the header here, scroll view, which calls the render nodes, which renders all the nodes in a map function, and the footer. So let's go ahead and open up the header here. So as you can see, this doesn't actually do anything. It just sits there and looks pretty. But you can check out the styles for it and stuff if you want. We won't be going through all the styles uh, for this tutorial because this is more about the logic of creating the actual application. All right, so that's the header. Um, then we got the footer. So let's go ahead and open up the footer. So as I said, the actual app, so this file is responsible for hand handling all the logic. So what we're doing is we're passing props to the footer. The footer then receives these props and sends data back uh, by these methods. Because as you can see, on change text, for example, is a method received by the footer. So let's see whether we have that on change text. I'm just gonna change the syntax to bad one. So we're passing this method called on change text, which is then used by the text input here to get the value of the current text in the text input. And we're then calling the method on change text from app.js. And we're passing in the value in app.js. We're accessing the value, we're calling it note. And we're setting the state of the note string, right? We're also passing uh, an input value which is simply the value of uh, the current text in the text input, right? And same thing here for on node add. This is called by the touchable opacity button. So on, pre on press for the touchable opacity, we are calling these props on node add. And we're uh, calling the add note method from there. So a new note is added, right? And this is how you can keep all the logic in one file for small applications. Uh, by passing uh, uh, methods like this as props and then accessing them from the shell component and basically calling that method back, right? So that's the footer. Um, for the footer, we also get this keyboard avoiding view. So the entire footer here is wrapped inside this uh, keyboard avoiding view, right? It has a behavior of position, which means that when the keyboard is open on the iOS phone or on the Android phone, it's going to move position depending on where the keyboard is. So in this case, it's going to move up, right? And sit somewhere up here. Now we do this because we want this to be visible while we're typing, right? So the keyboard doesn't block the actual component. All right. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm not going to go through any of the styles and stuff. You can check it out for yourself. The reason I'm not going to do this because this is really not hard stuff. Uh, you can figure this out for yourself. I just wanted to focus on basically the uh, logic for everything here. But yeah, you can check out the comments and stuff. Uh, go ahead and uh, do a clone of the Git repo and play, play around with it however you want. So thank you. I hope you learned something. Bye-bye.